Welcome to the Pantheon Plus Rewind. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 53 of the Rewind. Every week we get together on Sunday at noon Eastern Standard Time, and we spend an hour or so talking about our passion and excitement for Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. We dig around for new information from VR and all the other developers. Uh, we also look into what the community is talking about, and we open up conversation to various topics, even in the MMORPG genre itself, and how it can or maybe should pertain to Pantheon. We love highlighting the community because without you, there's really no Pantheon Plus, as what we do is certainly centered on giving the community a voice and highlighting the amazing conversations you all have. Of course, I don't do the rewind by myself because there isn't a soul on this earth that wants to listen to me ramble alone for an hour. So with me, as <laughs> always, is my friend Theric. How are you doing today, Theric? I am doing well, actually. Actually, to be honest, I'm a little bit I'm a little bit down, and it's kind of your fault. Um, mm. So this has been one of those weeks where I'm remembering all those things about pre-COVID life that I enjoyed, mm. and you did a little uh, a little shopping trip uh, last week, and you shared some pictures of your trip to a, a retro game store in your area, and we yeah. talked about this a little bit on stream the other night, sort of detailed your trip, and and man, I missed doing that stuff so much. Um, before COVID, at least every couple of weeks, I would usually go and do like a citywide um, thrift store adventure, right? So looking for like old big box PC games to add my collection and then sort of anything else that was sort of interesting. It was like a whole thing. I would plan out a route. I'd, you know, grab a coffee at Tim's on, on my way out and just sort of make a day of game hunting and that kind of thing. And not only thrift stores, but like I'd go to used bookstores and like if I saw a garage sale, I'd stop there. And it's fun. I really enjoy doing that. I've got a pretty decent collection and a lot of it's like come decent, from doing decent stuff like collection that collection is understated yeah. your collection is crazy and it makes me so jealous like i yeah. actually like now like i'm like wow like i need to have a cool collection of something like do i want to start collecting these like i don't know you should you should it's so much fun and that's what i miss about it so much because you can't i mean i could still do it it's you know the stores are open and you know but covid is tough and your comfort level and what you want to do and I've sort of haven't done it in a long time. Now, the good news is that when I do get back at it, I have a feeling that all these thrift stores are going to be completely restocked, which is <laughs> super <laughs> exciting to think about. I'm going to go in there and people are just getting rid of tons of their crap. And I'm like, ooh, OK. So, yeah. Bye. Are you are you familiar with who Pat McAfee is? I am. Yeah. He does He's like his... NES punk. No, Pat M McAfee's the uh, kicker from Indy. Oh, right. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. And he does a sports talk radio show on YouTube. It's blowing up. It's like one of the biggest ones in the world. And he's on Mad Dog Sports Radio now, which right. I, you know right. I listen to. It's why we have Pantheon Plus You is because of Mad yeah. Dog Sports Radio kind of stealing <laughs> their format in a sense. Um, but uh, so anyway, he's on there now. And you know, it's a vulgar show. You know, It's a YouTube mm -hmm. show. And it's all about sports. And he just loses his mind. He's from Pittsburgh like I am. So he has like the Yinzer accent. It's, it's a great show. <laughs> but anyway, today they were talking about the fact that like the Indianapolis 500 is going to have like 147,000 people at it this year. Um, and it's coming up real soon here. And then the NFL draft is going to have the three nights, but they're going to have 50,000 people each night. So essentially the draft's going to house like 150,000 people possibly. So they're sitting there and he goes, boys, did we do it? And then they're all quiet. He's like, I think we did it. And then he just starts yelling and clapping. We beat COVID. And everyone on the channel is like, we COVID's over. We win. Um, you know, so like all these big events are happening again. But the funny part is, is that um, they were talking about like the opening night for baseball. The Rangers had a huge crowd and there was so much drama going into it. Like, oh, I can't believe they're doing this. Not heard a peep about anything negative about that. So they had this huge crowd. And, you know, if there was anything negative that happened or people started getting, you know, all of a sudden everybody had it and all these we it would be in everyone's news feeds on every device mm -hmm. you ever have. So, yeah. like, you know, this little celebration. Did we beat COVID? Like, I know mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that don't want to say it yet, but. I'm feeling pretty good down here in Florida where we really never participated anyway. So. <laughs> yeah, you, you opted out early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. I, I wish that I, I do feel like we're on the cusp of it. I feel like we're coming around the bend and it's like, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I think that's what makes it so much more like difficult because I'm like, oh, I just want it to be done now because I can yeah. I see these things I used to enjoy doing. But yeah, no, it's good to hear stories like that because it does mean like, you know, there are places where it's not uh, it's not the. Uh, crazy as it once well was. here's the so funny I, part so i got remember i got laid off when COVID started and didn't have right. a job for a couple months and was doing this as hardcore as i could and then i got hired by adidas 
And so we, I, we've always worn masks. Like I've only been part of Adidas during the COVID procedure. Right. So right, like, yeah. I know what my people look like cause I'll catch them without the masks on from time to time. But like, we're so used to looking at each other with masks when we don't have masks on, <laughs> it's going to be like this whole different level of looking at each other because we've been focused on the eyes. Right. Like, I've always been really good at reading body language and like looking at someone in the face and being able to really tell what they're thinking emotionally, where they're at. I can see shifts. Like I'm really good at it. And the one thing that COVID has done is made me even better at reading eyes. Cause that's like all we have right to look at is right, like the eyes. Yeah. So, but it's going to be really weird when we see full faces. <laughs> I was telling somebody at work just the other day, I'm like, I could shave my beard off my goatee because you know, my mask completely covers it unless it's really long and like sort of sticking out the bottom. But like yeah. I could shave it off. You'd never know. Right. <laughs> it's so crazy <laughs> to think. But uh, yeah, no, it's all these. It's like a year and a half. It's crazy. It's, it's going to be a different world when we're done. Fingers crossed. Let's hope it's over. Mm -hmm. um, so next up, we always want to make sure we thank our adventuring party for the week all of whom donated during last week's rewind. We appreciate it so amazingly. And we are going to be planning with a lot of the donations that you guys have given to the rewind. We are going to be doing more giveaways for pledges, maybe do some shirt giveaways. We're thinking of redesigning a few Pantheon plus shirts we can do giveaways with. So uh, we're going to do some more fun stuff. Like, so mm. every penny you guys put into this show goes into something about keeping it going. So thank you for that. And uh, hopefully we put more and more of that into Pantheon as well. So that should be fun. Definitely. Um, so we have, here's our party. Now the first person here, it's the first time donating. We didn't know exactly what they were going to be. So I left it up to Theric. And of course, Dan <laughs> Johnson, you're a human ranger now. And I'm pretty <laughs> sure that you only picked human because you knew I wouldn't fight it as much if we went like <laughs> elf ranger, right? Is that true? It was a strategy. Definitely a strategy there. Yeah. So Dan, feel free to let us know if you ever donate again. Let us know what class you want to be or else we're just going to dub you the human ranger. Um, Dustin yep. Harms, the archive druid. Lucille, the gnome enchanter. Walking Waste, the dwarf cleric. Brian Reck, gnome summoner. Crow singing, the halfling druid. Halfling, not elf, halfling. Um, Sparrow, the elf druid. And Bounty Code, the human paladin. We also knew that we needed a DPS in this group other than, you know, me and Theric. So we added that yeah. extra DPS to make our group a little more balanced, right? So... Super good DPS, by the way. Yep. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you want to join the party and be up on the screen for next week's Rewind, which will live forever in the video, um, you can donate to the show during the premiere through the little button in the chat with the little dollar sign. If you do, make sure to give your future Pantheon race in class with your comment so we can include you in our raid group or group. Maybe it'll be a little more intimate uh, for the next episode. <laughs> As always, a huge thank you to everyone who helps us uh, with supporting the show, supporting our channels, whether it's just subscribing and following on our different platforms all of that matters. It doesn't have to be a monetary donation to know that we very much appreciate your support. But again, everything you guys put into us, we are going to put back into the community as much as we can. So very, very much appreciated. Thank you guys for everything. And uh, with that, Theric, let's get this show going. Well, let's roll. This week in Visionary Realms News and Notes. Okay, so in VR social media recap from their Twitter, we're going to stay pretty focused there. We had two pretty good questions come out from Kilson. But before we do, I do want to give a shout out something. Um, I guess you'd say it's sort of Twitter, sort of VR. Let's say not VR, but Twitter. Um, keep your eyes out this weekend if you haven't seen it yet or if it's not out yet. It might be out shortly. Um, I was very fortunate to guest write an article for MMOGames.com. They contacted me about Pantheon, said, you know, we'd love for you to do a feature as a guest. Um, you know, what do you want to write about? You can write about anything. So I uh, I put an article out there I'm excited about, about climates. You guys know how big into climates I am. Threw, threw it together, what that means for Pantheon, why it's so exciting. And hopefully it gets out there to a wider audience, not just, you know, within the Pantheon community, but everyone who uh, checks out that site. Another uh, big mm -hmm. win, hopefully, for Pantheon. I'm excited for that. So yeah, um, you, yeah. You're, you're big time now. You're, 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 uh, <laughs> you're reaching for the stars here and writing articles for websites and all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm, I'm super impressed. So that's awesome. Well, hey, when we started Pantheon Plus, what we said is any means necessary to get more people <laughs> into Pantheon, right? So whether yeah. it's a site, whether it's playing Guild Wars 2 and getting people to watch <laughs> our video, um, Dark Age of Camelot, whatever it is, everything we do, if you guys don't realize what we're doing here, some people may say, well, oh, it's like Minus just wants to you know, be a content creator for anything and wants to be seen. No, no, no. There's a strategy <laughs> behind everything we do. Um, when we make a video for Magic, you know, uh, ARPG coming out and we hit that, you know, right before it comes out and we get that big wave of hits and views and it blows up, you know, viral almost. Or when we did that for like Wilson guys, every mm -hmm. one of those people come back and look at our channel. What do you find? 
nothing but yeah. Pantheon content on the YouTube channel, right? Like even those mm -hmm. videos are buried. Like <laughs> you can't like find them right on the page. So that's what we do. We try to dig into the MMO genre, the ARP genre, anyone we can get to be like, Hey, what's Pantheon? That's a win for us. So mm -hmm. hopefully this article like, helps, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah or they're like harvesting people or like mm -hmm. you can take a little from here and take a little from there and bring them over here. It's like, that's yeah, it's all good. That's the yeah. dream. But anyway, check out that um, article. Uh, like I said, it'll be on MMO um, RPG doc, or MMO games com. Sorry for that. And you'll, we'll probably be tweeting that out so you can see it on our Twitter as well once it launches. So really excited mm -hmm. for that. Hopefully it'll be out by the time you listen to this. So yeah, maybe we'll throw a link in the description if it's up by then. Yeah, sounds good. So let's get into the VR Twitter updates. So the first one here that was put out there was, what does your character mean to you? Do you care about their actions, whether they die or not, the backstory or lore behind them? Or are they just colored pixels that you log in and out of as you feel like it? Um, obviously, a lot of very passionate people about this topic. And I will tell you that as I read through these, I did not try to just grab one side of this argument, but um, it's pretty heavy <laughs> towards one side here. So yeah. <laughs> um, let's start with Nafel, who's actually with Visionary Realms. He started by saying, I get super attached to my characters. In my head, they take on their own personas and their mannerisms, which given the chance, I will express via subtle RP during in-game activities. Sadly, it's rare for me to find other players that recognize or support this activity. Mm -hmm. uh, Crow Singer says, it's kind of hard to put into words. In some games, the character's not much. I'm just playing around. But in games I can really sink into, I feel like living part of my life vicariously through the character. I can be an adventure hero in a magic world, but she can be. So saying yeah. you can't be an adventure here in a magic world, but she can be the character. So that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, if Crow Singer says it's hard to put into words, I, I think that's a <laughs> you know worthy statement that it is really hard to put into words. I actually had the similar struggle with this question that she did. So it, it'll be interesting to uh, hear what she had to say. Are you impressed that I just one shot vicariously? It was rough. <laughs> I didn't even notice. Wow. I, yeah. I overlooked that. You're, that's another win for you. I know. Yeah. I, I'm calling that a one shot when I pronounce it right, like right off the bat <laughs> with a big word. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Odd Bunny says, I feel like there's little to no attachment to MMO characters. He says one can have several tunes on an account. And considering most have a bird's eye view of your character, it's hard to get attached about a character you don't see in finer detail outside the character select screen. Um, mm -hmm. understand that that's another reason why transmog is so important. So we'll move on. Um, <laughs> so this name, I, is it Martinix or Martini, I, um, 13, Martini, 13, Martini. I, I like the second part of the name much better than the first part. Just go with the second part of the name. Okay. So it's a fan of warrior of light and iron man. <laughs> Kind of kind of says it all right there, doesn't it? That's a big Twitter name. Um, but they say, welcome to the show for the first time. Um, my character means a lot to me. Final Fantasy XIV, my connection to them is a personal level. It's also very possible due to the ability to play all classes on one character. Very good point. But I feel very mm -hmm. personally connected to that character that he plays on. That's a great point. In Final Fantasy XIV, you can learn all the jobs. One character can learn every class. Now, it's difficult because like once you go through the story and stuff, you lose all that story experience on your next job you want to level, so it gets very grindy. But there's definitely people I know who've gotten like almost every single job in class leveled on one character. I mean, how could you not fall in love with your character at that point? You can do everything. Yeah, so. it's funny. It's because in a game like that, it's like you have you that, that one character whereas in a game with a bunch of alts where you can't really do that it's more like you have a family right it's like so yeah. are you more connected to one person or are you more connected to your family right it's yeah. sort of a different type of connection yeah that's a really good one i'm happy you brought that up because i wouldn't have thought about that off the top of my head um we have danar um he says it really depends on the game and how long i play it i tend to get more attached the longer i'm around and the more i invest myself in I have been very attached to a character. 14 years of EverQuest 2 did that for me. I have betrayed his city faction once and felt horrible. LOL. So <laughs> that's funny. 14 years is a long time, man. That is Fair a long enough. time. Yep. Arkham Cleric says, way back when EQOA and WoW, and to a small extent Final Fantasy XI, much of the determinant of progress I would invest the time in was either RP stories or exploration. While that has somewhat lessened for the sake of said progress. I can't imagine not giving a crap about a character I've made. I agree. It'd be pretty tough yeah. to have a character. Not Some, and sometimes it is like you sacrifice progress to deepen your connection with your character. You know, like there are games where making, doing RP things, you're not progressing in the game. And if that's, so if that's not important to you, that's fine. But if it is important to you, then you have to make a real choice there. It's like, 
what do I really want to, you can't do both sometimes. So it's an interesting uh, point he brings up. Yeah. And I think some people, we're going to see this later too, but some people have learned how to play the game with these and know that they can get picked for the rewind. So there's certain people that know if they put certain <laughs> things in their comments or the way they say things like they're, they're fishing for the rewind grab, right? Cause we go through and we <laughs> grab and we try to do like, if you notice anytime we talk about a topic like, or in a second topic, we very rarely use the same people in both topics. So mm -hmm. we really do try to like bring new people's comments in and stuff like that. But then you have the people that post really good stuff. You want to hear from them. So yeah. Jonathan Yeager here, uh, he, he hit the nail on the head. This is the ultimate fishing for a pick and he got it, nailed it. He says the only character that matters are rogues. The rest are colored pixeled slaves created to serve the rogue. Now that is a take. <laughs> he, he, um, it's interesting, you know, like he very much loves himself. He's very much into his, his rogue. And, uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, it's a question of, do you love others? Do you love yourself? And, and I think that, uh, he's very into his own, his own roguery. Well, just think look like his, if that would have said his, yeah, but if his that Twitter said, handle is Venom killed you. So yeah, Venom, <laughs> what does that yeah. tell you? Yeah, Poison Blades. Well, the other thing too is, is, you know, if, if one word would have been replaced by Ranger, if you would add Ranger, and, they probably wouldn't have got picked for the rewind. You know? <laughs> but it would have made more sense though. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. How do you serve a dead being? I mean, maybe if all, necro? maybe that's, see, they're mixing the Necro and the Bard. He always says the neck bar, Neckard or Neckard or Neckard. Yes, maybe it should yes. be the Necro and the Ranger because that's like a formidable foe right there. Ooh. The Ranger could die as much as they wanted. Right. I can get behind that. Ranger. The Ranger. The Ranger. <laughs> no, it's the, it's definitely the Neck Ranger, not the Range Row. The Range Row is ridiculous. Neck Ranger. You can't use yeah. the whole word Ranger. You're supposed to put them together. <laughs> So the the neck anger, nectar, I don't know. <laughs> no, it's definitely uh range. What did I say? Range row. row. Yeah, the range row. Sounds yep. like a sounds like a car. I don't know. Guys don't in like comments it. right now, pick how you would put necro and ranger together. Um oh, the man, next one here. Anyway. Yeah. The next one here is adequate random. They said in most games, my character is just a bunch of pixels put together. However, in a game where community matters. Ding, 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 ding. And mm -hmm. there are some character development world choices available. I am more likely to care about my character as they feel like they're part of something. So totally, right totally great point. That's true. And that's what I'll talk about in my part as well. Nice. John Wayne, they said, my main identity within the world. I don't, I care about them and would say that most often they reflect my ego in game. So I definitely keep that in mind and act as if it were really me. Also, just background support for that main ego. <laughs> nice, so, nice. Very main. Invested. I appreciate somebody who says that they act in game as they do in real life. I think that's really, you know, like RP is one thing and that's fun. But for people who don't do the RP, like you should be acting as you would in the real world, you know. So if you are a jerk in the real life, I mean, be yourself, you know. <laughs> but hopefully I like to think more people wouldn't act, you there's, know. There's been a few games like Mass Effect or like Star Wars Knights of the Republic, like single player games where I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to play this character as me. Yes. Um, but then it's like, it's not fun because you end up being <laughs> in the middle, like especially for games that have like a meter from evil to good. Like you just kind of stay in the like, middle the whole time. And I'm like, this isn't yeah. fun. I wanna, so I end up going more evil. I yeah. I had a buddy who used to play um, <clears throat> um, the old Star Wars games where you would become more sith like with your evil decisions right yep. and you'd get like the pale skin and the, get the, the cooler the powers would, yep. yeah the veins would pop out and you just get or, more sort of evil looking he loved that shit he was yeah. all into that so <laughs> yep. yep for sure uh Masic gaming says i'm a big role player and even if i'm not playing on a role play server or in a role play community i still like to step into my character when i log on and get into their headspace as i play definitely makes games a lot more fun for me Nice. Like a lot of people nice. saying they like to role play, even if they're not on a role play server. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim Floyd got uh, double post here. He says it's less a question of the character and more a question of the game itself, which circles around immersion in general. A game like WoW didn't really pull me in. However, Warcraft, the RTS series did. A game like Pillars of Eternity really pulled me in with strong lore and I became attached. And it's not one way or the other. The level of lore and immersion sets the level of attachment and meaning of not only your character, but the world and everything in it. Wow. Really well said. Yeah. That's like, uh, is he have the enchanter Tim from, uh, Monty Python, the Holy <laughs> Grail was his logo. Tim Floyd. Good know. stuff. That's him. <laughs> Some call me Tim. Oh God. We're doing Monty Python references. I can't keep up now. I'm out. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Patrick Collins is the last one here for this one. He says, I can't speak for others, but to me, they mean a lot. My primary characters have time and sometimes money invested to make him or her the best that they can be. 
I don't play to respawn. I play like it's me on the adventure. Hell, sometimes it takes me a day or two to even name him or her. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, Theric, That's how about true. you on this question? You said you've been putting a lot of thought into it. So where do you stand mm-hmm. on this? Yeah, so I have like a yes and no answer on this. So I do have a, I have a character backstory. Um, and I, but I don't always play from that perspective. Sometimes I'm just not in the mood to sort of be my character, right? If that makes sense. Um, sometimes I just want to be in the world doing stuff and, and doing progression. Like I talked about earlier. Um, sometimes that is what I feel like doing, but there are times when I really want to immerse myself. So I'll try to act in accordance with what my character would do from my background. I don't do heavy RP, but I, I have played within my character. If you, if you think of it that way, the, the way interesting point I think here is, um, how strongly you are connected to the lore to the lore really influences whether you choose to play your character. It's like what Tim Floyd was saying. I think back to um, the EQ and um, you know, I wasn't really strongly connected to the lore back then because it wasn't sort of something that I had delved into and there really wasn't, it, it wasn't, wasn't that much lore. <laughs> front facing lore. Yeah. You yeah. had to do a little background <laughs> work to get to it. But um, so I didn't really have a framework to, to work from, but look at a game today, like Elder Scrolls online, which has a super rich lore background and it, you know, when we've been playing Elder Scrolls games for a long time, it's way easier to get into character. And I know lots of people that do uh, feel very strongly connected to their character. And Elder Scrolls is a, online is a game that really facilitates that. So I, it's, with Pantheon, um, I've never invested as much time learning the lore in any other game as I have for Pantheon. So I absolutely feel like I'll be playing my character more often. Um, and sort of an aside, like... I've chosen to focus on lore while we wait because it's the one area I can sort of like safely sink my teeth into and start to build out. From yeah, that it, it builds like that actually makes you a better player already, right? Yeah, I get that. Yeah, because you've done it to yeah. me. You and Chris did that to me. I, I'm not a. I, I say I'm not a lore guy, but I am because I love the World of Warcraft lore. But outside mm-hmm. of that, I guess I'm not as as big into it. But then I love movies and I love like comic books. And I love to talk about like how the characters came to be back when I used to collect comic books and then the, how they've transitioned into the movie. So I think deep down I love lore, but I never like quantified it until mm-hmm. now yeah. a lot more. Right. Right. Um, yeah. But I'm like you, like you, you, you are thinking of your character backstory. Like you've made me think of it. We joked about having to write a backstory for Minus, mm-hmm. um, you know, and like, <laughs> I don't even know what race I'm going to be yet. I'm like, help, right? Like dark mirror, mm-hmm. halfling, dark mirror, halfling. I don't know. Um, but um, it's, yeah, it's for me, like my characters mean a lot. Like, yeah, I, in WoW, I had every single class max level, right? But there was something about my priest who I'd never really mained a lot after BC, but that was my first character I ever made, right? So like mm-hmm. I had that character through every single expansion and I changed its race a bunch of times. It went from male to female a few different times. I changed its name a few times. But it wasn't the name or the race or anything. It was just that this is my first character. This character I remember things with. Like, it was important to me. And that's kind of how mm-hmm. all my characters were. They were the, My characters were like these moments in time that were mm-hmm. very significant. Like, when I think of my rogue in WoW, I think of the Lich King expansion. When I would, you know, I was a mutilate rogue when everybody else was a combat rogue. And I was kicking ass on, like, the Sarfang fight. I think it was Sarfang. can't remember the, the fight where you fly up on the um, ship and you fight him with the leeches. But, like, on that fight, a rogue couldn't help with adds. Because if you meleeed the adds, then you would heal the boss when they hit you. So, mm-hmm. literally, it was the only fight I can remember where the job of the rogue was to stay on the boss, boss is in one spot, back turn to you, and you just lay waste with the most perfect rotation and execution you can, and you <laughs> will absolutely punish the DPS meters. I mean, I'm talking, I would double number two. That's how strong mm-hmm. I was, because I couldn't, couldn't do anything else. The only job I had was when people were running around doing stuff, kill the boss. It was just really cool. So, like, every character to me is, like, this reimagining. It's like kind of like when you listen to a song, yep. right? Yep. You listen exactly. to a song and it takes you back to like the moment where that song really mattered. That's what my yep. characters are for me. Maybe that's not I the can, same way people have said it with like the like role playing the character and being the character, but like the moments in time. No, I totally, totally get what you're saying. I think of it like a scrapbook, right? Think of it mm-hmm. like a pictures in a scrapbook and your, your character is that scrapbook for you. So you can go back and say, oh, I remember doing this because while the character's story might not be developed their accomplishments are mm. that yeah. is their character that is the character so what i'm doing right now is like developing my character's relationship to the world while the world's being built in terminus you know um and then when that when it when it comes along you know maybe i'll have other characters my my main ranger is going to be my first character for sure obviously and 
it'll be that moment in time when Pantheon launched, but then maybe, you know, six months down the road when I've done a bunch of stuff and I want to create some new memories, I'll play my gnome enchanter, right? It's, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. And I really like how you framed it like that. I think that's, I think that's probably pretty common for a lot of people. So yeah, they're really well, well explained way of doing it. Awesome. So what do you guys think in chat? Talk about, uh, let us know what you think of your characters. You know, what characters stand out for you? Do you like the lore? Do you like to play as them or is it just the memories? So, uh, mm-hmm. Next one here is the last part of the first section here, community debate. What do you like best about the community like Pantheon and what keeps you around? Now, I told you earlier there was someone who was fishing before, right, for the rogue comment. Let me see <laughs> that again here. Um, but the best comment, and this is not fishing because this is true. I know Nathaniel James very well. He's a phenomenal human being. He's part of our guild. You know, I'm just going to announce that out, but it doesn't make any difference because he's a phenomenal dude. And this is totally from the heart because I know how much he talks about stuff like this. And he replied, truthfully, without people like Basgrim, Drac, and Pantheon Plus being so open and engaging with me in the beginning, I would not be here at all. Community is literally everything to me. And it's why we get on Discord and Twitter. And I can't wait to experience Pantheon with them. I love that. Best yeah. answer. <laughs> Tons of likes on it. Um, VR even liked it. Just mm-hmm. an awesome, awesome comment there. Well, you know, it's funny because I remember we had our first guild meeting and and like you said, he's in our guild and he was the only person to sort of the first person to say, you know, here's my real name. Here's who I am. And and really open about himself, like Mm -hmm. very much an open guy. And I I really I think that that's hard to do. And I really respect that. So, uh, you know, he's he's definitely genuine in the sentiment. So good on you, man. Yep. Libwick says, I like that it's welcoming and supportive of fun and nerdy and insightful and cre- creative and patient and funny. <laughs> so just a bunch of cool things about the community. <laughs> Breakout says, with people I've interacted with, mostly on Discord and in the Plus Guild, I feel generally welcome. I really quite a lot of time. I'm really quiet a lot of time, he says. <laughs> Almost got that one. Because uh, that's <laughs> how I am. However, if you want to help with anything in this community, he's very supportive. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Good dude. Um, Gloth Drogan says Pantheon isn't just about the current community. Um, it's about the hope of a widened community once we finally launch and about the friends we will make along the way while waiting and eventually playing. I don't think we would have a community without people like Basgrim TV. We wouldn't nice. be here. So I no, agree with that. no. And you, me, Baz, Nathan, everybody's said the same thing over and over again, right? Like we are we wouldn't give up the journey along the way, even if Pantheon never comes to fruition. It's just, you know, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Ashley says, and she's at Scriptomancy. She says, when I play an MMO, I want to play with others and not only to socialize, but because I crave not only the challenge, but the camaraderie that's achieved by accomplishing a task I couldn't do on my own. That's why I'm here to be with others who are looking for the same thing. Well said. Mm-hmm. DM Harm says, such a tough question. I think best of all, it's been so fun getting to know everyone's background as we all have tons of common experiences, but also there's so much variance as well in the community. It all comes together in passion behind the Pantheon project. It's a good one. So this one here gets called out for bait. So I had to take it. So it starts with JJ and JJ says, since I belong to the plus guild, I comma, honestly don't really pay attention to the community all that much outside the people I follow here on Twitter. My guild is all I need. And then he put in quote in uh, parentheses here. He says in before this gets read, on the Sunday's edition of the Rewind. <laughs> and, yeah. and then another guilty. Yep. And another guilty stands in fire says, JJ coming up with the straight up minus beat. <laughs> so had to put it in. Yeah. Couldn't skip that mm-hmm. one. Couldn't do nope, it. Nope. You can't ignore the bait. You're nope. in your fish just like that. Well, Got to take it. Uh, Montana yep. Lissette Michelson says, I've never been involved in a gaming community. Pantheon will be my first one. And I'm so glad, excited. Um, see you guys when Alpha drops. So awesome That's stuff awesome. there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Trey, aka Jixon, says, I like nice people, helpful people, people that care. The kind of person is hard to come by in most MMOs these days, but I do get a good vibe from Pantheon's peoples. Love it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, Pharos says, the notion that it could be something different, a game that stays true to its vision and brings back the old school era of MMORPGs we grew up with and loved. And finally, yeah. I love this one. It's from overall opinion. He says, just want to level up with my homies. <laughs> <laughs> simple. Keep it as simple, right? Yeah. Love it. Um, I'll start with this one. You know, yeah. what, what more could I say? Um, yeah. I have been for almost three years now. 
talking about how community matters, how that's the phrase that got me involved, that got me to leave my guild and leave WoW and start digging into this crazy journey that's been the Pantheon journey. And again, just like you just said, don't regret a second of it. Don't regret the frustrations. Don't regret the burnout. Don't regret when we push too hard and start to get feel it. You know, I don't regret when we get bad news and things are delayed or things aren't quite what we thought they were and we have to figure it out, right? I enjoy every piece of it. And this community is amazing. Like the rewind doesn't exist, legitimately does not exist without the community. Because really what got us started, we we made class videos and we, we made the website, but the thing that pushed us to be able to talk to you more and to, to make people curious, to make people join in on the conversation was Pantheon Plus You. And that show doesn't work if nobody comes on the show. And we've done 54 or 55 episodes of it, and we've mm-hmm. never been without a green room of people who want to chat. Um, community is not just important that brought me here, but without community, there is no us like at all. Like yeah. community is, is everything to me about this game. And I value it. I cherish it. And I just thank everybody who helped us build our community. But we, hopefully you guys see, we gave it back. Like the Pantheon plus discord isn't about Derek, me, Drac and Poiru. It's, it's about you guys. You guys make it freaking awesome. You know, yeah. it's God, Pantheon Plus is so yours. Uh, and I and know that sounds cheesy, but Pantheon Plus as a whole and what we do with the website that enables this community to take control of it, to, to put the content out they want to put out, to have the tools, everything we do is trying to give everything Pantheon Plus is back to you. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a good question. That was well said. Uh, it's a good question. And, and yeah, I'm going to focus in on what it one particular part of it says. What do you like best about it? And I like that there's a sense that every person in this community is looking for something. Now, we're all different. It's a very diverse group of people in this community. And But what unites us is that we're looking for something that's lacking in the MMO landscape right now. You know, again, what that is, difference di- uh, varies by person. You know, we don't all want the same thing. And there's definitely a lot of discussion debate about what's exactly, you know, we're looking for. But the, the fact that we all acknowledge something's missing is, is the thread I think that, that ties us together. And I like that. And I do have a little bit of a rant here because I, I, there were some comments in this thread that kind of bugged me. Um, there were people that said, you know, it can't really be a real community until there's a game that's launched to support it. And I really, really disagree with that. Um, you know, whether you choose to participate in the community is one thing, but if you to deny it exists is, is pretty unfairly judgmental, unfairly sort of um, a different, well, it's not, not a great true. view on it. <laughs> yeah, I just I, I don't know how to disagree with it more strongly. The very reason I do this podcast and the other things that we do is, you know, that are Pantheon related, or at least myself, I know you too, is because we know a strong, vibrant community is essential for Pantheon to succeed as a game. Like if this was a single player MMO or if this was any kind of other game, I wouldn't be doing this because I don't think it really matters in those kinds of games to have a strong community behind a game. And I, people will disagree with me when I say that, and that's fine. Um, but that's not, you know, I know there are other communities out there for non-MMOs, but promoting and fostering a community around Pantheon, as fun as it's been, it has purpose for me too. And I've been super lucky to find people that believe in that as well, you know, like you and, and the whole community as well. But I completely am grateful for that. And I think that it's unique to Pantheon. I just don't see it in other places. Or maybe I'm not looking close enough, but I don't see it in other places. So to go back to my original point, you know, we all want something that's missing from the genre. And I think this is a game that requires community. So some may say, you know, I want challenge, I want open world or some other feature that the MMO, you know, is that Pantheon sort of promising. But the overarching requirement is people want community, whether they admit it or not. You know, they do want that. They want a lasting connection. And it's what's keeping me engaged. It's what's keeping me, you know, patient for launch day. So I think that's that's my take on this question. Love it. I love it. Nail on the head there, man. And yeah, people who say there isn't a community because there isn't a game, then why can I name a hundred different people that I've interacted with over the last three years that are meaningful to me? Even people yeah. who frustrated me and fight with me, you know, they're part of yeah. the community, right? So exactly, exactly. It exists. There's no way to just wave, you know, the men in black pen and, and say it's gone. <laughs> so, um, but that's exactly. it for VR news and notes, Derek. So let's jump into the next section. When the Pantheon community speaks, we listen. So let's dig into the forums and fan projects to see what the discussion's all about. 
Okay, so we are going back to Twitter for a question this week. It comes from actually uh, Chris Joppa Perkins, VR's creative director. He had one of those questions that these are the type of questions that I totally dig um, because they are very imaginative. They're very creative. Um, he's the creative director after all, so that makes sense that he's asking these questions. His question to the community was, describe a time when something genuinely piqued your curiosity in an MMORPG. So the key word here is curiosity. And that's like a desire to know more or a feeling of temptation to see something a little closer, even at the risk of death, you know, that irresistible pull to peek around the corner. So this is one of those ones that people got, you know, very much down memory lane with, and I loved it. So here's what some people on, on Twitter said. Um, first up was Lunas, and they uh, said Trickster's Haven and Vanguard. Discovering that there was a whole second part to the dungeon after weeks of clearing it was amazing. So I am super jealous because that's not a, something I ever got to do in Vanguard, that area. And uh, I had no idea about that. Even after all these years, I didn't know that was a thing. So, And I love the picture he's uh, put on Twitter. So if you guys want to check this this uh, thread on Twitter, the link's in the description because there's some cool pictures to kind of go along with the stories here. Um, the next one was from uh, Etienne Leduc. And they said, I remember clicking the fire pot in Nariac Third Gate and getting a prompt, it's locked or stumbling into the caves leading to the plane of fear portal in the Ferrat, hearing the rumors of the giant underwater creature in the Lake Wrath tier. So those are all EQ memories. I think the cave in the Ferrat, accidentally stumbling into that would be pretty funny. I don't think I ever <laughs> accidentally went in there. I went in there on purpose a lot, but I never accidentally stumbled into yeah. it. So. Um, the next one was from Patrick, and he said, exploring the waking land or wakening land as my bard and hearing the mystical plane of growth flute tune for the first time. It was so eerily enchanting, I had to explore to figure out what it was. I got the same vibe from that cave when Kokarna did on the stream, looking through that hole. Mm. So you'll remember that, right? It's a great moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. fading, I think that's called Fading Memories. Yeah, Fading Memory is the tune that plays there. And that was one of those moments that definitely inspired and <laughs> piqued your curiosity. Um, the next one's pretty cool. It's from uh, John and Nostalgia Gaming. And they said, uh, first time on QFM Island. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. It's QFM Island on Final Fantasy XI. So it's a snowy, desolate area on rocky cliffs. Exploring the zone's far reaches, there's a corridor that leads to an enclosed, empty area labeled Behemoth's Dominion on the map. Low-level me wandered in there. Uh, if wondered if there was any purpose to do this area. Well, if you wait long enough, 24 plus hours, this guy or his big brother, King Behemoth, will spawn. So <laughs> it's just, you know, the pictures, you can't see them if you're listening to this, but the pictures is this giant sort of monster. And, and the fact that, you know, Final Fantasy XI is, you know, I'd never played it myself, but I know that the the reputation is that it's one of these very, like, deep games with lots of mysterious things that are hard to discover and sort of get a, get a real read on so it's one of those situations yeah the next one's pretty funny uh, this is szechuan steve on twitter and they said eq1 the seemingly bottomless pit in pineal i got a little too close to the edge once and have since learned to curb my curiosity <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't think i've told you this story before minus but i um I, I the only raid i ever led was on uh the hole which was a zone in the that section that uh zone of eq in part of pineal or off pineal and um, it was it was a very underutilized zone. There wasn't a lot of people that went in there. So that, I think that was the sort of rationale for a guild. And I think that was also one of those things. It's like it was nobody really knew anything about it. Like you look up on like, you know, EQ Atlas or Alex Zams or whatever. And there was like very little information about it because it just seemed uninteresting to people. So we were definitely intrigued by, by a place like that. Nice. Yeah. The next one is Arcanum Cleric. They said, I was exploring some forest lands in uh, EQ Online Adventures. I vaguely remember an area, but vividly remember happening upon a small log cabin that was uninhabited by a pond. It was peaceful. I always wondered who had lived there and why. Sometimes I'd go there to write letters to my friends in game. <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. Crazy. Just like a place to go to to take to do a task. You didn't have to be there. Totally like completely optional, but just that's where he felt like that was the mood, the, the atmosphere was there to do that. Pretty cool. The next one's from uh, Bounty Code. Our, uh, I didn't friend. even know he was on Twitter. We just, I we didn't just either. discovered, you just discovered <laughs> Bounty Code's like secret persona. Yeah, I know. I know. Maybe he just created Twitter for this very purpose. <laughs> but anyway, it's, he had a good one. He says, back in 99, when I was a level six wizard in Tox Forest, and I heard by word of mouth that there was laid 
to the west, a new piece of land called the Kara Isle. Mm. I had no map, just word of mouth. I had to swim across a great body of water just to reach it. One of the most exciting MMO experiences. So Kara Isle, right? I killed everything on Kara Isle. (laughs) Dude, I had a bard. I did the run speed AOE dot. And just the whole city of cats just running behind me in a big circle, (laughs) dying slowly for hours. Farm nice. like, could never go there. They all hated Your me. Your faction was, oh, was, was terminated. Awesome. So <laughs> much experience and like I think I got a lot of plot there too. If I remember correctly, oh, it was great, great, nice, nice. Yeah, I remember Kara. I don't, I don't remember going there specifically myself, but I remember being a very popular spot for for, for that reason. I think a lot of people leveled up there. So. <laughs> The next one's from Walking Waste, also a friend of the show, said, uh, traveling through as Shara in Vanilla WoW, mm. I came across a bridge that led to the edge of the world. Following this bridge eventually led me to a giant green statue in ruins overlooking the water. You could see even more ruins in the water. Spent the day exploring there. Mm. Nice. Good one. And, yeah. And then lastly, uh, we had Stephen the Rider. He says, first, uh, first time I explored the King's Forest or the Feywild in Dungeons & Dragons uh, online. Uh, a lot of the environments and random encounters are genuinely surprising. So I tried to include a bunch of different games there. I tried to hit every single uh, one of the more major MMOs. Um, Minus, what uh, what do you think about this? Is there a thing that stands oh, out? You know, there's, dude, your there's interest? so many. Like, and I get that yeah. a lot of people go back to EQ, and I can name fifty EQ. I can name fifty from what I, any one I've played, any MMO I've played, any. I can name great moments in that just piqued my interest mm-hmm. or were exciting. And it's funny because so many people are like, oh, nothing anymore. No, it's, it's not true. It's not true. There's so much <laughs> still. Like DDO, like, do you remember when we first played DDO and we did that illusion quest line where like everything mm-hmm. was illusions and stuff and we had to find our way right. through it? That was so cool. Yeah. Um, you know, like I put on this post, uh, and I've talked about it on the show before, but Drustvar in, uh, BFA, which was one of the more frowned upon expansions for wow, there was this quest, there's this like this witch area. And, and like I said, I've talked about it before. I won't go in depth, but you, you had to help this little girl and she's like prancing through the forest, like nothing's wrong. And there's all this crazy stuff going on, like witch things hanging and weird demons everywhere. And she's all like, ha ha ha, come help me. And like, you're helping her and you have to get all her stuffed animals from everywhere. And you take them to a tea party and you pour the tea and you notice all of a sudden there's like a big pentagram underneath the tea party. And it summons this crazy monster to kill you. And she's laughing about it. Like, weirdest craziest creepiest greatest quest ever i loved every second of it it was so good um, i watched your video that you yeah. posted as part of the twitter response to this because yeah. I, I i've heard you tell the story before but i'd never seen it like actually seen it before and it was crazy it was pretty good man yeah and that's just a tiny part of it you know because there's so much leading up to that but yeah oh it's it's great I, it's so fun but like well, all that stuff matters to me like uh, geez even the p- p- playing pantheon you want to talk about yeah. peaking interest? You guys saw when we first discovered the frigid climate. It was mind blown. Mind that's, blown. That's what I was just going to say. I, I, playing with you, it was like, I can't, I've never played with somebody who's so, you know, you are interested in every new <laughs> thing that comes along. Like, there's nothing that I think that, you know, you are not like, I want to at least see this once or I want to check this out. I don't care what it is. You're like, you're very much excited by the content and i've never i haven't played with people like that before usually and it's very refreshing because it, it, well, it's, it's contagious right it spreads and you're like oh yeah cool it's funny it too because realize. i don't even do this on purpose like people may think it's like a gimmick I, i'm not a gimmick guy like when we see a cave i've pretty much i noticed that when i watch back our footage i always go it's a cave and i don't yeah, mean to do that talking about. i swear to god that's not like a plan this is how i'm gonna say there's a cave i literally see a cave in the distance and i just get like giddy there's gotta be something in the cave let's go in the cave where does this lead to yeah like it's funny because i'm also go 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 ccc kill 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 but i'm also the guy that's like what's that let's go fast like mm-hmm. everything's fast but yeah yeah well yeah. you know yeah that's but it's it's a it's a good it's a good combination i think and <laughs> so, so for me i i reflected on this one quite a bit and I, I thought about you know we played eqt recently and the more i look back on that game the more i really think I like that game a lot. There was a lot of things in that game that I was curious about, both when I played it at launch, but just even in more, our more recent um, uh, play with it. We explored the runes of Arsun, right? You remember how cool that was, all the golems yeah. that were in there. Yeah. Remember we would go into the rooms. There was a, there was so many different rooms. There was one where they, they were all in stasis, and then we yeah. woke them up and we and wiped, they died. right? Yep. Yep. They died, yeah. <laughs> there was another one where it was like that laboratory-type room where you had to kill everything in it first to get that secret alcove to open, the yeah. scientist 
guy behind there. I can't remember what his name was. I was actually so into that that I went back after we stopped playing because I could stealth and I was high enough level now that basically nothing saw my stealth. I actually went back and I wanted to see what was deeper in there. And there's, I found the coolest areas. There's like a forge where the golems are being created, right? Huh. And they have massive golems, not just the regular ones we fought, but like these hum- humongous ones. There's a fire pit. There's tons of name skeletons down there too with like forge overseer and the experimenter. And it's, this is the kind of things that make me curious. And, and yeah. it's not just on like the lore aspect of it, or like the cool story part of it. It's like, I want to know how hard they are to kill. I want to know like, do they have special abilities? Does it open up another area like that guy in the laboratory did? You know, what loot do they have? Of course, I want to know. And curiosity, like that encompasses all those things for me. It doesn't just mean story or ambient setting, which, you know, you kind of surprised to hear from me, but I want to know the secrets of like, I want to know what's inside these mobs, you know, like I want to know what they're carrying, what they're holding and what they can do for me. So. Dude, like what was the other one we went to the castle? That was insane. Mm-hmm. Hidden Nectropos doors castle, everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Hidden doors everywhere. We had to get like all the sisters and we find all the <laughs> kill all the sisters and the demon guy spawned. And then we went down into the like generator and killed the it, that place was crazy. I mean, mm-hmm. like all the secret passages and all the things you had to do to like open these doors and the castle was all twisted and weird and, yeah, that, I got to be honest. When we played EQ2, that game, I didn't play that much. I played a little bit when they put the uh, time lock progression server out with Nathan and them. And I played mm-hmm. it and it was fun. And I think I got to like 30 or something. But the the fun I had with you guys on MMO classes, uh, MMORPG yeah. classes 101 was phenomenal. I mean, that was a blast. So yeah. probably the, it's a good the game. biggest standout moment to me so far in that, in, in the us playing all these games by far. I agree. I agree. Yeah. And it's perfect for this question about curiosity. Definitely. There's stuff I want to go back and, and I'm still curious about. I want to go back and do so. But anyway, moving on from that great question by, uh, by Joppa there. So uh, we'll go on to our introductions. Just the one this week, short and sweet. Uh, this is from uh, Gamel Smurf. And they said, uh, just joined, happy to be here. So I actually chimed in and I asked him what uh, class and race he was thinking of playing. And to my great joy, he oh, said, Ember boy. Elf Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> Though he also said some kind of summer summoner looks interesting. So he's played healers and tanks back in the days of EQ1. So he's definitely going to go DPS all the way now. So that's awesome. Well, Gamble, so, there's still time to be a rogue, non-elf, <laughs> and enjoy being the best DPS. Probably not actually utility, but also <laughs> DPS. Yeah. Uh, stick with your guns, man. Stick to your guts. <laughs> You've you got it right. <laughs> <laughs> So I want to I want to give a shout out to um, some folks in the community here with regard to uh, fan projects, because people are always coming up with new things. Um, one of the newer members of the community that I've been having some great conversations with um, um, on Twitter back and forth is uh, Mark S. Moore. He also goes by Redbeard Flynn, he also goes by Captain Atrophy and Drac uh, did a plus profile on him not that long ago. And so Mark and I have talked back and forth. Um, we talked about how lore pulls people into an MMO and, um, you know, we both have a mutual love of writing. The difference is, is that Mark is an actually published author <laughs> with two books. Um, is he's got a couple books out called, one is called Rise, Birth of a Revolution. The other one's called Stand, The Cost of War. And there's a link in the comments and uh, the episode description to his website if you want to check them out. I think they're on sale right now, actually. I saw on Twitter today. Uh, Mark has um, started streaming on Twitch and creating content for his YouTube channel as well. And there's uh, links in the description for those as well. So give him a follow or a sub, um, learn about more about the future resident of Terminus. So cheers, Mark. Hope that uh, takes off for you. The other one I wanted to highlight this week is um, a fan fiction author, new fan fiction author. Um, it's over on the uh, blog at uh, basementrpg.com. They have a blog, and uh, this author's name is Raven. And they wrote a really nice short story that takes place in the uh, Kaga Sands area of Terminus. It's a uh, it's a pretty quick read, um, and it sets the stage for uh, quite a few more tales to come. A couple of interesting characters introduced. So mm. I uh, was, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. So I go gotta write this minus out. background story. I gotta pick my race. I can't write the story until I pick my race. <laughs> you need the, you need the fundamentals. You're missing the building blocks of your story. Yeah. Okay, you've got your name. You've got your class. Can be like a half, half mer slash halfling. That'd be weird, right? Like <laughs> a, mer, a merling, a merling, a merloc. <laughs> oh god, a merloc. Oh my god, yeah, it is a. It kind of oh is a merloc. Yeah, That's nice. Oh, <laughs> Oh God! Wow, that was a great Murloc. <laughs> that was pretty good. Right? I had no idea you had this hidden talent for Murloc. Yeah, I've uh, I've done some Murlocking. That's for sure. Well, from playing Hearthstone for years, I can tell you that. Oh, like hearing Murlocs is, oh yeah, nightmares, stuff and nightmares. Actually, if I'm being honest, I got to Legend with a Murloc deck, so <laughs> I shouldn't I shouldn't complain about them too hard. So nice. 
Yeah, and uh, that is it for this week's community discussions. Here's the mail, it never fails. It makes me want to wag my tail. When it gets here, I just yell, mail! We're getting sued. All right, well, that masterful singing and song that, you know, makes all of our days better means that it's time for the mailbox. So we got three you questions that. today. What's that? You should do that song in Murloc voice sometime. Oh, I don't think that it would just be <laughs> not constantly. There's not really any, any word. They just do that. I'm just baiting you. I'm just, just baiting you to do it again. To be honest. Yeah. Well, it was pretty good. I mean, those are right off the cusp. I'm not even trying. Um, oh, yeah. So let's start with LaFell. LaFell says, which quality of life feature do you consider a must have for Pantheon at launch? This could be something you've yet to be seen or from an old MMO or newer. Uh, do you want to go first? Yeah. Yeah, I'll take this one first. Um, and I, I think there's going to be actually probably some people that don't agree with what I have to say about this, um, because I'm going to say crafting with your materials from the bank. Um, mm. I have the having the exact material on you in front of you when you're in a crafting station is a huge pain. And I know some people will not like that, but there's a lot of people out there playing Valheim right now, <clears throat> and I'm one of them. And I mean, come on, are, am I honestly, am I wrong? If you play Valheim, you know what I'm talking about. I spend so much time going back and forth between my stupid chests and the crafting stations to try and get these things made. Um, I know it's, I know I have the mats. I just want to skip the tedium <laughs> going back to pick out the stack, split it, move it to my inventory, run back to the forge, realize I only forgot another item. That is definitely tedious. And that is a quality of life feature that I think Pantheon's crafting should definitely have. What about you? I would like to see, maybe it doesn't get handed to you right away, but I, I, in WoW, I really liked the ability to eventually earn, um, even if it's like not infinite uses, to be able to earn like a portable bank or like a portable repair person or like a repair hammer you can put down so everybody can repair without having to run back to town. Like, but again, they don't have to be permanent. Like it could be like an item you stock up on before you go out and throw down like a repair hammer and people can all repair from it until it expires or something like that. That kind mm -hmm. of thing, like portable banking, uh, not abused, or like a portable salesman or a portable repair kit. I like mm -hmm. those type of things a lot. And I think it, you know, when we have limited time and the world's as big as it is and you already spend, you know, the first part of your night journeying to where you're going to go. Um, if yeah. you die and have to run back, that's one thing. But if you're doing well and then it's just like, oh, I have to repair, like, do we have to waste everybody's time so that that person can run back, repair and come back? And like all that time, almost like it dying, but not. So I do like mm -hmm. those little um, little things like that, I think are cool. And again, make well, them even, uh, Yeah, even DAOC had those uh, portable tinder boxes, right? To throw mm -hmm. down and you can, you know, get your mana and help regen mana and help that kind of thing. So stuff yep. like that's definitely quality of life, yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with stuff like that. Uh, next up, Gulu Gulu, what spells or abilities do you think will be most overrated and underrated? Hmm. Yeah. This is a good one. I have, a, I have an answer if, if you don't mind. Yeah, go for it. I'll think about it for a second. I was looking at the classes and I was looking at the, the skills and I, I was thinking, well, I've played the wizard so I can speak about that. Now, this wasn't a skill that was in when I played it, but, um, it, you know, you look at the page and I want to look at the frozen fortress detonate ice mm. uh, spill, a uh, spell for the wizard. The, the way it reads is this, encase yourself in solid ice, putting you in a frozen state and protecting you from incoming damage and detrimental effects. This shield will last until the effect wears off or enough damage is absorbed to break through. While Frozen Fortress is active, you may use the Detonate Ice ability, dealing cold damage to nearby enemies, putting them into a frozen state. So that sounds pretty cool. I think that that might be, I don't know if it's underrated, but I haven't seen a lot of people talking about it. Um, it depends on a couple things, obviously. It depends on whether the mobs lose interest in you when you go into this ice block if you're a wizard. I mean, if they just keep hammering on it, it maybe, it's, maybe it's overrated. Um, and the question is, of course, also how much damage does that explosion do? But, um, you know, either way, it, the explosion still freezes the mobs. So the wizard can then like run away, right? Because they're going to be frozen and presumably moving a little slower. Um, if nothing else, we get to come back and find our buddy Drac encased in a block of ice, which would be pretty funny. Um, <laughs> so I like the spell a lot. I think that it might sort of slip under the radar, but uh, yeah, it's a good one. Okay, so my answer is not to be trolly or joke about the things I joke about, but it's legit. Like, and I know it's going to come out that way. Okay. I think right now this uh, ranger shot where you actually physically aim it over the shoulder is super overrated. I don't think that that's a super fun mechanic, honestly. And really? I don't know that that will be very fun or something that's worth doing when you're in very competitive or difficult fights. 
I just Mm. don't know how well that's going to work. I think that's sort of overrated. I don't know that that's something worth adding into for literally one class to have a weird first person shooter esque style shot. I don't Mm -hmm. love that at all. And I think it's need, I say perhaps gimmicky Um, Mm. because again, it's only being used for that one ability from what we know right now. I mean, maybe there's going to be a wizard fireball that you can, I don't know. That just seems like it's a weird thing to me. I think underrated. I think the rogue rope, I'm telling you, I think the rogue rope is going to (laughs) be sick. I think there's going to be a lot of moments where that's very cool, especially because a rogue is going to be a native climber as is. So a really good climbing rogue is going to be able to do a lot for people. I think with that rope. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good it's a good call. I, I I'm trying to find a way to disagree with you about the aim shot. I I I think it's either going to be great or it's going to be useless. I, I don't think there's a middle ground for this kind of thing. Um, it's it's so. I'm just waiting different. for someone to pull it out, get ready, line it up, miss, <laughs> crap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, when you when you are putting the aiming onto the player, you are definitely leveraging. You know, you're losing that control that the uh, that the computers giving you anyway you're you better yeah. sacrifice if you're sacrificing that control for it's you weird better be it's, worth it it's like an action combat ability in a game that's like with people who are so anti-action combat yeah <laughs> so it's it is strange weird. it is definitely strange it feels like elder scrolls online quite a bit right so right it's, yeah it's weird yeah. i don't know maybe it'll be good i mean you know hey listen <clears throat> prove me wrong um <laughs> and finally here the last one here crow singer says if there are two moons with different cycles are we- <laughs> werewolves just really confused and tired on terminus. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I put the questions in this week. So I, I feel bad if you don't have a, an answer for this one because this is a very well, fun it's easy to answer. Question. It's a yes or no oh. question. Um, okay. Yes, they're confused. Okay, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Good. I'm glad to hear you had an answer. <laughs> My question. I, I I really wanted to think about this one because I, I think Rose Singer has it right. You know, when you if you've ever traveled like internationally, like you get really bad jet lag. You know you that feeling like I'm awake now, but I should but I'm about to pass out, right? This could be the disposition that's exclusive to werewolves in Terminus. So what if you saw like a jet lag night wolf, right? I think that's what these two moons is. That's the effect it's going to have. And you just keel over in mid battle. You know, you get its, you get its HP halfway down and then it just drops dead, right? Because it's so jet lagged. And then when you think it's dead, it just pops back up and, uh, you know, that's the kind of thing. So I think that's the effect that the two moons would have A lot of people run around with ripped clothes on. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Nice. Well, I mean, I'm surprised you didn't go super lore mode here and talk about the three different types I, of werewolves. And I, you know, this werewolf it. might be, this werewolf might not be, but no. Yeah, no, I, I considered it. I definitely had more <laughs> different avenues to go with this question. But, uh, you know, I wanted to actually talk about, JN said recently that one of the moons has a big crack in it. So I thought, yeah. hmm, there's two moons. One has a big crack in it. Maybe that can affect. Anyway, I went down the rabbit hole and I just thought, no, no, no. Okay, we're going to, we got a lore section coming up right after this. So I'll just keep the, <laughs> keep it All there. Right. All right. And with that, let's wrap up with some story time with Theric. Sit back and relax. It's time for the lore you know. Okay, so this week for the lore, we're going to learn about the Dark Myrrh. So here's the lore. Wait, wait, wait the Dark what? The, the Dark Myrrh. Hmm, I don't know what those are. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm excited right. to learn. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, you've heard of them before, right? Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> as written by Justin Estulame Gerhard, here is the lore about the Dark Myrrh. The Dark, the Myrrh hail from the planet Issel, a race born at a time when her oceans were dying. Wars between ancient leviathans had erupted beneath the waves. In battles so fierce, even kingdoms on land were destroyed. But the gods of Issel did not stop the calamity, fighting with each other instead of giving aid. At last, one humble goddess named Cyrenai begged the spirits of Issel for answers. Manifesting herself in the depths, Issel gave Cyrenai a sacred gift, power to bring forth a single new creation. With this gift, Cyrenai fashioned the mirror, a race with kingly hearts and furious might. Out of their own way, the Dark Myrrh of Cyrenai would perhaps become a contemporary of Thronefest, even its chief rival. But their native beauty, valor, and nobility have rusted down to bitter ornaments. A vast disdain for other races lurks beneath their tranquil surface, calling none friend and few honored as foe. Their ferocity in battle is as ancient as their heralded origin, while their tall, slender form and ghostly eyes cast an unmistakable presence. Dark Myrrh ambitions are a pregnant mystery, their kingdom quietly advancing on land and sea. And that's the lore you know. 
Well, what a way to end it as I'm sitting here talking about what do I want to be? It's weird because these dark myrrh that you're talking about, they actually mm-hmm. remind me a lot of dark mirror. It's weird. Mm. I think they might have stolen the story here, but I can't prove it. Um, no, no, no. But it might be from a different game because I've, I've, I've been on good authority that they are the dark myrrh. Mm. I could have swore Brad McQuaid called them dark mirror, <laughs> but <laughs> what do I know? Um, anyway, uh, awesome, awesome piece of lore there. Uh, I think the dark mirror lore itself is pretty awesome. Like, uh, it is pretty it's, great. It's tough. It's I tough. Yeah, I had to I limit know. myself there. I wanted to include more of it. I was like, I yeah. think you're reading this because this is really good, but it's yeah, really good. too long. Yeah, it's really good. Well, everybody, thank you so much for listening to the rewind today. I have to still make this decision. Now, Twitter told me I have to be a halfling. Um, so I probably <laughs> should follow that, but it's dark mirror, halfling, dark mirror, halfling. Like, I hope this doesn't come down to the day where I have to make my character and look at both of them and try to do the character model. Which one do I like more? It's going to be interesting. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do here. And could you imagine I'm, if I made a dark mirror female as minus, like that'd be crazy. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to put it down right here. I'm going to say you will be playing a dark mirror because mm. the model is better. And I think your hair options are going to be more <laughs> in line with what you like. <laughs> well, the, the, the real thing that makes, and we're totally sidetracking the end of the episode, but the real thing that makes me debate, I love the halfling. I love the halfling story. I, they think they look really cool, really neat. I like everything about them. And what they bring is the dagger, right? The added dagger damage or the dagger skill. Mm-hmm. But the dark mirror can detect stealth better. They can stealth better and they yep. can breathe underwater. So the whole reason yep. I made a rogue was to be able to adventure seamlessly around Terminus as this invisible being and see what I want to see. And I just feel like Dark Mirror allows me to do that a little bit more. Right. So it, this is like the perfect encapsulation of what Pantheon is about difficult choices. You can't uh, be everything. You have to make a choice. I love it. Mm. Yeah, it's tough. (laughs) Well, anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening to another episode of The Rewind. Theric, amazing job as always. Thank you so much for everything you do and everything you put into this. It is awesome. There isn't a rewind without you, my friend. And there definitely isn't a rewind without all of you listening and supporting us. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And until next time, everybody. Thanks, man. See everybody next week. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Pantheon Plus Rewind. Be sure to follow Minus and all Pantheon Plus related content on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube under the name Pantheon Plus. Also, be sure to follow Theric at Pantheon Theric on Twitter. Keep up to date on all Pantheon Rise of the Fallen information on www.pantheon.plus, the definitive source for all media of Pantheon. Until next time.